ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray. And I'm Caitlin Olive. And I'm Jim Fuller. And she is not Peggy Burke. No, <laughs> no. And we are so glad to have Caitlin on the air with us uh, mm -hmm. this week because they are out of school, spring break. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen our Saturday news, uh, Caitlin has been reading the news with us now for what, three years? Since I was a freshman. Since, uh, so four years. Yeah. And now she is a senior. And perhaps one of her bigger claims to fame, she has a lot of those, is Caitlin is the daughter of the John Olive, who is the head coach at football coach at Tullahoma High School. And sister. <laughs> That's right. Twin. <laughs> twin. With uh, with uh, uh, Caleb. Caleb. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I kept right. on to say Jerry, but that's not right. <laughs> you know, well, I, I am his sister too. Yeah, but yeah. not a twin. <laughs> no. Not a twin. You know, I didn't. Know, I honestly didn't know that you and Caleb were twins. A lot of people don't. Yeah. They think one of us is older or younger than the yeah. other. Unbelievable. So we you know, both graduate yes. this year. And a little over a month. A little over a month. Have you made a choice on where you're going to go? Yes, I'm going to East Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. And what about Caleb? Is he? He's going to go to UT in Chattanooga. Very good. Um, how's that? How's that going to be for you? Because I know you two are very close. It'll be weird, but I think it would. It'll help us branch out and become who we really are going to be in life. Right. And but y'all have y'all have had a really really close relationship. Yeah, it's Adam's really nice with homework. We split that in half. <laughs> <and switch. laughs> cool. So we won't have that next year, but cool. I'll find somebody else. <laughs> you know, you were telling me before we came on the air, you got a pretty interesting. Well, I, I guess it was interesting to me anyway because that didn't used to happen when we were in school. Uh, Caitlin's only in, in high school for one class every yes. day. And explain to our audience how that happens these days. Um, I take three Motlow classes, and the high school offers early morning English and early morning math. And so I come in at 7 every morning, and I'll take either math or English depending on the day. And then I have PE2 with my dad, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I go down there and work out. And then I leave a little bit early and go to my music appreciation class out at Motlow. Do you, does that mean you, that you get the degrees at the same time, or...? or yeah, you still um, get all your credits, it's just you get double credits. So some of my classes, all my Motlow credits, will go on to East Tennessee State University and they'll give me credit so I don't have to be there as long and take those classes yeah. again. You know, you mentioned uh, you had uh, PE with your dad. I, I've often wondered, how how is that when your dad is the head football coach? And, and, and we all have the tremendous respect for John Olive because what he's able to get out of these young men that, that play football. How is that for you, me and his daughter? Is he tough on you? I mean, he pushes me harder than he does the other girls because he expects me to lift more weight than the other girls, and I really can. But um, other than that, I still call him Dad in class, and I'll ask him questions, whatever's going on, but Caleb doesn't call him Dad. <laughs> he doesn't? No. Oh, okay. Well, you know, that, that's kind of funny because my daughter used to work on this show, John and I, and uh, and I instructed her, please don't call me dad on this show. I don't want anybody to know that I'm old enough to have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but I got over that. So anyway. Well, in, in answer to your question to her, I'm going to add a little bit to that. Uh, being around the field house, because I'm around there a lot, mm -hmm. and and watching Caitlin work, Last year, she worked as diligently and as hard as any young woman I've ever seen, trying to reach the, what is it, the Hoss the Cat, su the super, super cat. cat status, because that was a gift, she sort of a gift that she was working on for herself, but it was also a gift she wanted to have accomplished for her dad. Mm -hmm. And she busted it, and I don't know whether you got there or not. I was you, one point away by the end of my, like, sophomore year, and then... Because of all the academic classes I had to take my junior year, I couldn't take PE2, but I plan to finish, get the Super Cat at the end of my senior year. So. All right. You know, and so, yeah, she, that's that's one thing that we, she yeah. really, uh, it's amazing to watch this young lady work out because she is something to watch. She's, she's very dedicated. You know, John, uh, when, and when we were doing the, uh, the John Oliver Fifth Quarter show, you know, and, and Caleb, uh, or Jared sometimes would deserve an award. We had to we had to really push John Olive to go along with that. It was like, you know, these kids had to work hard for that. So yeah, yeah. So. 
And one of the things that one of the things that I want to compliment Caitlin on, and and it's something that that uh, Caleb has as well, is, is if you noticed in this last year's football season and, and the previous year, he has great focus on the football field because a lot of times Caleb's not the fastest out there, but Caleb knows knows how to play the game, and he would get himself open and they would throw the ball to him. There might be two or three people around him, and he has mm -hmm. tremendous focus in being able to focus on catching that football and make, make play. Mm -hmm. She is probably one of the best we've ever had as far as reading the news with our, with our young people and because she's a very focused young lady, and when she's locked in, you're there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's something that John and Cherie have... Uh, Brought, been, been brought to bear, and that's someone else that we haven't mentioned yet, and that is the lovely Cherie Olive. Oh, absolutely. Is, who is, if you don't know, the hidden judge for Miss Tullahoma. <laughs> she is. Of course, her, her, her judging doesn't really <laughs> count, but uh, she, she, uh, she plays that game well, doesn't she? Her and Gigi Robinson. <laughs> That's their that's their thing. <laughs> so, are you are you already making plans for what your career might be, or what how, what you're going to pursue? I'm looking at education. I'm thinking in English or possibly a physical education major, mm -hmm. but I haven't really decided which one. Sure. Okay. You know, the the Tullahoma High School baseball team is doing extremely well this year, and uh, and. Uh, I think they're what twelve and one, or something like that. I think they lost I, I'm one. Not yeah, they lost one. They lost to Warren County, um, maybe a week or ten days. Ago. Really? So, yeah, I didn't realize that. But yeah. this week they're in North Carolina, playing for the national tournament that they got invited to. So that's yeah, really that's interesting big. to hear about. Yeah, that, yeah that's big. Yeah, that's and this this particular team is ranked like twenty uh, second in the nation, not right. in Tennessee, in the nation, <laughs> and uh, so big things are expected out of this particular team here. And uh, I don't know all the players. Uh, Caitlin's probably more familiar with them than I am. But uh, Jordan Sheffield is probably one of the top ten uh, baseball players in the country. I don't know if he, he's got a scholarship to yeah. Vanderbilt. Yes, he's going on a full ride to Vanderbilt. He signed a few weeks ago right. with them. And, I, of course, I, I, I'm sure with his talent, uh, he's going to have to decide, do I want to take this $2 million contract <laughs> with, the, with the pros or I want to go to Vanderbilt? So. And his brother's well, not far behind, yeah. exactly. Justice Sheffield. Justice. Yeah, exactly. They're both very, very good athletes. and uh, it's, It would have been a, a great pleasure to have seen them continue to play football mm -hmm. oh, as yes. well and uh, because it would have made a great difference. They, these, these two young men are the kind of young men who affect change wherever they are because they're very 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 good athletes. they could pick up a sport today and be yeah, very, the number one on the team tomorrow very, very, <laughs> very good athletes and and very bright young men as well yes very bright young men as well i wonder if there's a competition between them one is uh, jordan's a year older right yes I wonder if there's all this competition between the I'm two. I'm sure if it were Caleb and I, we'd be right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they understand. I was talking to Justice one time, and he said he wants to go play with his brother. Like, he couldn't imagine a team without his brother on yeah. it. So I think he's planning to follow Jordan wherever he goes. Right. And, you know, for you folks who may not know this, the Sheffield, uh, the, those two young men, I think their uncle is uh, Gary Sheffield, who was a Major League Baseball player with the Atlanta and uh, – Get, I forget where in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I can't remember the other teams he played for. So it's in the it's in the gene it's pool. It's definitely in the gene. <laughs> it's definitely in the uh, gene pool. And then uh, Gary Sheffield was a great hitter, great major league hitter. Uh, well, of course he was a great all around player, but but probably best known for his hitting. Right. And so, well, Jordan jacks him out pretty regular. Yeah, he does. And they have a younger brother, Jackson. I mean, he's really small, but we'll see him in the next few years. Yeah. No kidding. I yes. didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> he's okay. the third That's one. good. That's good. Oh, okay. We like that. Yeah. We like that. Does, did Jordan pitch as yes. well? Yes. Well, I mean, okay. he's, he's the one that got the whole thing. He's the one that got the recognition for, because he's throwing a, what, 95, 90, 95 98 I don't mile know, an hour up yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. As a junior, as a sophomore. Yeah. Okay. So. I noticed the other night, Justice, Justice, the younger one, struck out 11. Yeah, but, you know, oh, he's, yeah. yeah they're both. And he's left-handed, like which yeah. makes him even oh, more unique. So. Yeah, cool. Well, speaking about Tullahoma people, 
Last night, a Tullahoma son, uh, Dustin Lynch, was on Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, wow. And, uh, and sang uh, She Cranks My Tractor and Cowboys and Angels. Mm -hmm. So they, clo they closed the show up. As in most of those late night talk shows, the music usually comes at the end, so you have to stay up forever <laughs> to see who you want to see. You know? And uh, they, usually get, they usually get a song. Mm -hmm. And he did She Cranks My Tractor, and then they went, they went ahead and they cut somebody. Because I heard Jimmy Kimmel apologize to so and so, they just ran out of time for so and so, and then they let him close the show wow. with take the show out with Cowboys and Angels, and they, he didn't get all the way through it, but but I thought that was quite unique that he was given that amount of time yeah. on that show because yeah. that's uh, and I think Cowboys and Angels made it to number three, number two or three, and She Cranks My Tractor is I think at twelve right now. Well, you know, so uh, that's that's big. That's huge. Another Tullahoma native that's made it big. Big, you know, yeah. That's, that that's cool. huge right there. So, uh, and he's a good kid, and he's a good-looking kid, and you know he could he could be he could be the next George Strait. I mean, he's tall, thin, great smile, clear <laughs> eyes. You know, he's got that he's got that look that will last. Mm -hmm. And he comes up with really original songs. Like, yeah, yeah. I think it's cool that he writes most of them himself. Right, yeah. And that's something George has never done. George, I don't think George has ever written one song he sang. Well, I mean, John knows about the writing them yourself kind of thing. And one of the neatest things about that is that uh, you you always get paid from that if you wrote it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Something if, if you perform it, I guess a lot you times get paid entertain, for it. A lot of yeah. times entertainers, unless they're selling albums, you know, they get and, and they they don't get that much money off of that until they pay the record company back all the money that they owe them for promoting them. Mm -hmm. So, they, of course, they get t-shirts and hats and concert tickets and stuff like that. But they don't get any money off of the product until later on down the road. Whereas if they write that song, every time that song plays on the radio, they're getting paid for it. That's nice. Yeah, <laughs> about a nickel. It's about a nickel a play. Yeah, but if you got a hit, that adds up. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. 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 think about it. Think about it. It plays. It plays four times an hour, or four times, uh, say three times an hour, two hours is a quarter. So that's twelve quarters. That's three dollars. That's, that's three dollars a yeah. day for a radio station. Thousand radio stations. Three thousand dollars a day. That adds up pretty quick. Yeah, I could live on that. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> if they want to give that to me, I'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're telling us it's time to move on right now, folks. So uh, we're getting ready to do that. Don't you go away. We'll be right back with more of Just Plain Living. Citizens Tri-County Bank has the checking, loans, savings, and traditional banking services you want. Plus free internet banking and bill pay, bank your change, Visa gift card, and lots more state-of-the-art banking services. We focus on the service and services you want. So you can bank when, where, and how you want, at our offices, or from just about anywhere. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank you'll ever need. What is Rotary? We're a network of people like you. In fact, we're the original social network. More than one million of us live just about everywhere you can think of. And we mean everywhere. We get together to exchange ideas, grow our businesses, and make new friends. We volunteer to help our own communities or someone else's. We're right around the corner. Come join us. The name is Rotary. Rotary International. You're welcome. This facility was built literally on the international dateline to bring Charter customers tomorrow's technology first. Like Charter Internet, which was just made faster again. With speeds up to 100 megs, you can download a movie in two minutes. The number one internet service provider in the nation. Click. Fogelman, good luck with the presentation tomorrow. Already nailed it. Get Charter Internet Express for only $19.99 a month. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And as you saw in that graphic before we came right back on the air, this is called Police Pointers with uh, Tullahoma Police Chief Paul Blackwell. And, uh, Paul, we're glad to have you here today. Thank you. And uh, 
let's see, Paul usually comes in with a subject, and then if there's any time left, I can ask him anything, I guess. <laughs> but, but but he's 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 worked this out pretty good. He usually has his he he usually has his segment. These segments are about eight minutes. He Paul usually usually got it figured out how he's going to cover that. What are we talking about today? Well, today kind of thought I'd go to a, a, a different perspective, mm -hmm. and that's utility poles mm -hmm. and, and street signs. Right. And people would probably think, well, that's kind of an odd thing to talk about. But the reason that I thought that would be interesting this week, uh, last week I went home at lunch. When I was leaving the subdivision, right there on the stop sign was a, a, a flyer mm -hmm. that said, I've lost my dog. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on the, on the stop sign. Mm -hmm. you know, and my first inclination was, Look, you can't put this on a stop sign. Right. City ordinance is very clear. You can't put posters, flyers mm -hmm. on street signs. Uh, so I went ahead and I took that one down. I feel sorry that they've lost their dog, but but that's not where you can advertise. I'm looking for it. Yeah, and most likely uh, the chief is going to know exactly who you are because you probably put your phone, the phone number numbers on, on there. Phone and I did. I thought there, about so. calling them and right. saying you can't do this. But I, I took a few minutes and rode around some of the other streets near my neighborhood to check the stop signs, and I found eight of those flyers on stop signs. So I removed them, uh, and, and no, I didn't call them. Mm -hmm. uh, but that made me get to thinking, you know, we, you drive around town, you see these flyers and posters and advertisements put on utility poles, taped to street signs, and, and I just thought it would be a good time to say, you can't do that. Right. Um, one, the city ordinance says you can't do it and it can be punishable up to $165. Uh, oh man, that, that could expensive. get expensive. It's yeah. expensive. Um, but think too about like that particular flyer. If I hadn't taken it down, how long would it stay on that street, that stop sign? Mm -hmm. If the people had found their dog, were they gonna go around and pick up all these flyers? Generally the answer is no. Right. And someone else has to do it. So uh, it's important for people to know those aren't, those aren't advertising. Uh, stands for them. You know, this is the first I've heard of people putting signs uh, like that on stop signs. You, power poles. And, yeah. you know, well, and, and then you go, common, that's right? the next step is going to the power poles. Those are also prohibited. They're not designed to be advertising posts. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you look at them, they may be weeks, months expired from whatever the event was. And I thought since we're in March, warm weather's right around the corner more and more people are going to be advertising their garage sales, their mm -hmm. their outdoor events, and those utility poles may become attractive areas to post a flyer uh, or even a street sign to post it. And we just wanted to get the word out that you can't do it. And I talked to the utility board about their concerns about the utility poles, and uh, I had a general idea why they don't want you putting them on their utility poles, but to hear it straight from them, brings it home a little bit better. Uh, when you put a poster or a flyer or something on a utility pole, you use, usually use a staple, a nail, uh, maybe tape. Um, and from the utility standpoint, they're concerned about that because if you drive a nail into the pole or you drive a staple and then the utility worker has to climb the pole and they still climb it. You know, we think of bucket trucks and everything, but they still do it the old-fashioned way with the cleats on their boots right. and, the, and the strap, and they still climb poles. Uh, and their protective equipment, if you ever look, they wear the, the sleeves that go up the arm, they wear the heavy gloves, <coughs> the heavy boots, mm -hmm. and all of those are designed to protect the worker from electrocution and, you know, any other injury. And if they were to come up that pole, going up the pole is fairly easy. Mm -hmm. It's coming down when it's more dangerous. If they were to snag their glove on a nail, snag it on a staple, you know, that deteriorates the value of that safety equipment. It could injure them as well. Right. So the utility company has that concern is that it's a, a safety factor for their employees. Um, and again, they, they're very proactive. If they see something on the pole, they'll take it down as quickly as they can. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to just encourage folks, keep that in mind. If you look at some of these utility poles, where do they tend to post them? Near an intersection. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, obviously when someone's driving a car, we want them focusing on the road and not reading all the advertisements that yeah, are on, the, on the utility pole. Yeah. It's a distraction. Right. A lot of our accidents occur mm -hmm. at intersections. Mm -hmm. so, so there's several reasons that we shouldn't be doing that. Um, and, of course, the city is on a new program of the sign sweepers mm -hmm. where they go out and pick up the signs that are uh, not posted properly. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll, uh, and I understand they already have taken quite a few off the utility poles. Mm -hmm. But we just like to encourage folks to uh, keep that in mind when they're putting a flyer out, not to use the utility pole or the the city signs. Uh, and it's it's unsightly too. If you, it is, and I'm sure it occurs. The, uh, there's a lot of that going on probably when people start having yard sales and stuff like are, that. Yeah. They they get put out, they don't get picked up, and then the the sign sweepers, the volunteers, then they have to go out and and start picking this stuff up. You know, and there are other alternatives for that. I mean, if you're having a yard sale, I know the Tullahoma News has a section de dedicated to that. It's not very expensive, and, uh, we, we, you know, we have means to advertise that for you very inexpensively here on Channel 6. And if you've lost your dog, if you'll build the PowerPoint slide, we'll run that for you for free. Uh, so, there are so, all kinds of resources know. out there. Social media has just taken over. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great and, example, yeah. You know, the police department has embraced social media. Mm -hmm. We get information out quickly, and it, it allows for a back-and-forth communication. Mm -hmm. And so you're right. There are so many resources, y'all's programming, mm -hmm. the social media on the Internet, and uh, there are other things than sticking it on a utility pole. Yes. And uh, so we would just like people to understand that. It's not that we're tearing those, taking those things down to be mean or anything, but it's obviously a violation of the of the code. Okay. All right. So keep that in mind, folks. I've got one minute left. It's your minute. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, you, you know, your police officers are are uh, occasionally have to get in high speed chases. Mm -hmm. I guess in the, in, in the in the city or whatever. I just wonder, is part of their training? Did they teach them how to? drive their cars and, and that, that kind of manner they're tr are they they're, they are trying to do they that? do uh when you go through your police academy mm -hmm. there's there's a, a section called evoc mm -hmm. emergency vehicle operations course and that's when you do your your driving skills you learn to drive uh, at faster speeds mm -hmm. you learn the dynamics of a car how just barely turning your wheel can displace the car so many feet mm -hmm. and you get to practice it and do all of that it's generally one of the more enjoyable parts of the academy. Oh, really? You get to do the things you see on TV, the spins, the yeah. on a wet pad where they, you know, the fire truck is hosed down a big parking lot. You accelerate and you punch your brakes, let go of the wheel, and just hang on for the ride to see oh, what the goodness. car does. Oh, okay. So it gives them an idea that, uh, you know, as you drive a vehicle quickly, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of dynamics come into play, and. So it is, and, and we every year have to go through some type of refresher, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, just a, a video or, or something. We try to do about every two or three years actually get them in a vehicle and set up a course and, and put them through some of those paces again. Okay, so when you see a police officer driving about seventy on the, down the streets, you can know that he's trained to do that. And his lights and sirens should be on <laughs> if he's doing that. Exactly, <laughs> but don't try it yourself. That's correct. Chances are you haven't had that experience. Yeah. Chief, thank you so much. Thank Always a pleasure to have you. you behind. We'll be right back with more living right after these messages. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. The highest standard of trust offers a sense of safety and comfort. It's established over time. You know when you see it. You know when you feel it. There's a standard of trust in healthcare. It's the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval. In 2003, Life Care Center of Tullahoma voluntarily achieved this accreditation and maintains it still today. Life Care. 
meeting a higher standard because residents matter most. family's favorite show shouldn't have to fight to be seen. With Charter, you get four DVRs. So now every family member can watch what they want, when they want, where they want, without any battles. Call now to get DVR service for your home. All right, folks, we're back and it is time to talk about the Lions Club and their concert that they have coming up. Uh, real soon uh, uh, around the 1st of April and we have Russ Barrett and Gary Overman on here with us today and they are lines and the bling. Yeah, you like that? Man's got the bling on today. Almost He's got bullet, a little more on than I've got. Almost how, bulletproof. How many, year, how many years have you been involved, Gary? Um, I think around 25. Kind of lost track. So. Kind of lost track. Yep. Got the medals to show it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Russ? Five years. Five years. Yeah. Uh, tell us about this concert that you have coming up. It's at uh, Grace Baptist Church on April the 9th at 6.30, mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee School for the Blind. It's free. And uh -huh. I want to make sure that the public knows about it and invite them out. Now, now, this, these are, we, we have some video that I tell you, what we might do right now is run a little bit of that video and show you folks what we're talking about because they have been here before and we took this video and it's an That's incredible right. it's an incredible show and uh, let's roll that video right now and then we'll come back and discuss it a little bit Well, I guess the Lions Club has been working with Sight forever. That's Calling. the main, that's a matter of fact, that's the main project behind Lions Club is is working with vision, isn't it? Vision and, and also hearing. Right. And of course, and there's lots of other charities, but the, the primary focus is, is on vision. Helen Keller came right. and spoke to the Lions Club back in 1925 and asked them uh, to become Knights for Sight. And so ever since that challenge was raised, that's been that's a primary been focus. Right, right. But since the, uh, some of the primary causes of blindness is uh, things like diabetes and uh, river blindness. And, and, you know, there's many things that can cause blindness. So a lot of the work now is, is trying to prevent blindness where we can. Right. Help those that are blind, but do everything we can to, to prevent, uh, prevent it. And so we, we go in the kindergartens and now we have a photometric eye screening system. And we go in and try to catch those kids at a very young age. There's lots of, uh, I think about nine different conditions that if you catch them before the age of seven, you can save their sight, so. Well, and there's a lot, there's a lot of young children who, who possibly don't do as well in school as they should because they can't see. Because they don't know. Or yeah. they can't see the board. Or here. Right. And or, nobody, here. or here, and nobody yeah. knows that they're they're not where they need to be on those two things, and that's why it's so important for people to have their young children tested. Right. 
right. to find out what these conditions are. Uh, the School for the Blind, that's in Nashville. Where is that located? It's in Nashville. Nashville. And so, uh, and I'll, I'll probably ask you a question I, you might not be able to answer. How many people are involved in that school? It's, it's hundreds, I know that. Right, right. And uh, but kids come from literally all over the state to, to, a, to, to attend. To it's the primary school for those who I are... I think it was started in 1884. Well, I know, it's very, yeah, very yeah, old. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. All right, what about, I know at one point, uh, you, and I know you have several programs, but at one point we, we did some advertising for you about bring your old glasses to us. Mm -hmm. Y'all yep. still, anybody that has old glasses out That's there right. getting ready to upgrade or want some of these fancy new glasses or frames or stuff, there's somebody out there who would be glad to have what you don't want. And, and we'll recycle and, yeah. and they'll and y'all can recycle those and have have new lenses put in them and that's because right. frames are very expensive now. that's right and it's not a cheap yeah. thing to do so. yeah we have we have people go on missions and in like a third world country they will stand in line for three or four days to get a pair of glasses yeah, yeah. all right well that's great this is this is free this that's concert free. that's correct uh, but I bet you <laughs> I'll bet you if somebody was there and wanted to uh, to make a donation, we'd take it. There'll be a there'll be an avenue for them to donate some money. That might night. be a basket there. Might yeah. be a basket or two yeah. or six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's at Grace Baptist Church. It's at Grace Baptist Church. Yeah, April the ninth. April the ninth. Six thirty. Six thirty. And uh, where where does where does your lines where do you meet? How, could somebody just meet, come and visit? We meet at Dameron's uh, every Wednesday. Every Wednesday at twelve o'clock. And, and if somebody was interested in lines, could they just show up down there and say, "Hey, I'm interested in what you do"? They could, yeah. or they can go to our website, and there's a contact phone number on our website. Mm -hmm. It's downtownlines.com or okay. downtownlines.org. All right. Well, that's very good. Anything else? It's yours. It's yours right out there. It's the world. Okay. We might mention that we've got some other, you know, we obviously in the business of raising money. Sure. And uh, we have a charity dinner that mm -hmm. we have in February over at the Convention Center in Manchester. Usually over 200 people attended. Uh, we have a golf tournament. Uh, those two are probably our biggest fundraisers. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll be selling Boston butts here this spring. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do that again in the fall. Monty Hatcher cooks those, does a great job of that. Right, right. And so, um, so those are just some of the fundraisers that we right. have. Right. And we like to thank our corporate partners. Uh, yeah, we would. Yeah. Without them, we couldn't do anything. Russ, yeah. Russ himself is a corporate partner. Yeah. But uh, that that's uh, a big help. The uh, telehome businesses have always right. been very kind and very generous, and support us. And without that support, we really couldn't do the good works that we do. Okay, guys, thank you. Hey, thank, thank you. you for doing thank you for what time. you do. All right. thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. And don't forget, that's the ninth, and that's at six o'clock. Six o'clock, and it is at uh, Grace Baptist Church. We'll be right back after these messages. Serving you as a local firefighter. Proudly served our country in the United States Air Force. Serving Tullahoma. Helping our kids. Hi, I'm Terry Stroop. Your comfort is our service. We'd like to thank Telahoma for the privilege of serving your heating and cooling needs. So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find the Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Cove Lake, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Martin Weekly, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, Rugby in the Big South Fork, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at TennesseeTrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. If you like HDTV, you're going to like what Charter's been up to. Adding so much free HD that Charter TV is a whole new experience. National Geographic HD, Animal Planet HD, Discovery HD, Sports in HD, Movies, News, Kids Programming. Plus, Charter now has thousands of free movies and shows in HD on demand anytime. You want to see more TV in HD? Try Charter. It's smarter.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're pleased to have, in, have join, joining Caitlin and I, uh, Charles Parrish, who is with the Tullahoma Planning Commission. Charles, welcome to the show today. Well, thank, thanks for having me, Caitlin and uh, Jim. You, uh, a lot of people probably don't realize some of the things you guys do or how important the work that you guys do at the Tullahoma Planning Commission. Uh, give us a little overview about uh, some of you know, what the Planning Commission is all about. Well, the Tullahoma Planning Commission is a, a, a group of about seven individuals, I believe, that have been appointed uh, by the mayor and aldermen, and um, they're tasked with uh, looking at different developments that take place in, in the community and, and just sort of a second eye, I guess, to make sure that uh, uh, it, it, it meets the standards and meets uh, uh, the goals of uh, uh, and, and rules and regulations of uh, where our community is going. Uh, also, we're kind of tasked with uh, uh, planning for the future for Tullahoma. Okay. What are you all planning for the future? Well, um, as I was telling Jim as we prepared for this, uh, this meeting, uh, we're, we, we kind of have to be the folks that uh, have the crystal ball and try to see and view where Tullahoma is headed into the future uh, and, and do our best job to make res uh, recommendations of uh, how our transportation system should uh, be laid out uh, and, and, uh, and, and try to just look, look toward the future and, and plan for it. Hey, would it be correct to say that probably uh, you guys are responsible for trying to see that our organized that we we have sort of organized growth so that we don't have uh, exactly organized growth is, is is a good point you just made because uh, we we try to help coordinate. Uh, what is going to happen with the owners of the property in Tullahoma uh, so we just don't have hodgepodge of this and this you mm -hmm. know happening over here without some coordination uh, so we're, we're a good group to to work with to uh, uh, try to make sure that that goes forward in a proper uh, way yeah I, I would have to think that might be kind of fun because you guys uh, you can think out of the box here, can, can you not? I, exactly, you and that's, that, a lot of times that's the exact analogy that I've used is, you know, let's don't get bogged down with uh, what, w whether we have the funding available today or, uh, you know, yes, we're, we're concerned about how the public's going to view it, but let's put it out there and get the comments from the public mm -hmm. uh, as to what they, they believe and think uh, we should do. So, yeah, we just we, we kind of can think out of the box, as you said. and. Uh, what are your, some of y'all's ideas that are like out of the box? And well, good question. <laughs> uh, we, we try to make sure that we, we, we plan properly and we don't want to create situations where the public uh, would be upset with uh, some, some far cried idea that we had, <laughs> but uh, primarily our road systems and, and trying to consider where the, the city's going with its growth. Uh, a lot of people don't realize we have what they call the U, uh, UGB, it's the Urban Growth Boundaries. It's actually a, a piece of our property outside of our actual city limits that uh, is where we have the, uh, the, the authority to grow into those areas uh, eventually and, and those be a part of our city limits. So we try to you know, view where we think that growth is going to go and try to have a, a, a make a plan for our road systems in those areas to support it for safety reasons and, and, and what have you. So are you all behind the Cedar Lane plan with all that expanding? Exactly. This particular plan that we have is um, uh, sort of a 20-year look out forward and we've broken it into five-year segments. And uh, the first five-year uh, segments, this may be hitting on what, what a minute ago, what your question was, where are we headed, uh, is to continue the Cedar Lane uh, expansion uh, to, you know, it's now two lane to a three lane, and even as far as having some bike paths uh, along with that as well. Um, you know, that's another, uh, it's not just uh, car transportation, we look at uh, uh, the airport transportation, we look at railroad transportation, uh, pedestrian transportation uh, in the community. So it's all different avenues of uh, getting around and I motivating. I think of the pedestrian. <laughs> and, and we try to help coordinate. We, you know, we get with uh, the rail system here locally and make sure that what we're planning uh, fits with their goals and their needs for the future, as well as the airport. We worked extensively with the uh, airport authority to make sure that uh, the ideas and the growth that we have uh, will support uh, their their future 
task. You may have heard they're they're in the, the development of on the northwest side of the airport a new air park mm -hmm. uh, industrial area. Well, oh, wow. one of the things they're going to need on Lefferts Mill uh, to at least get to it is a little improvement to that road system. So that's in our first five-year plan is to help improve that from uh, roughly uh, North Jackson Street out to that uh, facility on Lefferts Mill. This this uh, <clears throat> program or this plan that you're working on now has a name and I don't remember comprehensive it's, yeah Telehoma uh, comprehensive transportation plan oh, okay yeah. now y you guys will actually make recommendations to the board of Malderman or to adopt this plan is that correct is yeah that we're their first set of eyes uh, that's another way to maybe put it uh, we're the ones that are supposed to you know, get in the ditches and, and, and do the work and, and, and do the research uh, a lot of this that we've uh, to make our to come to our conclusions, we've done a lot of traffic studies, mm -hmm. safety studies. Uh, you know, we do a lot of uh, uh, to see where we've had problem areas in the community with the accidents, and try to address some of those. What can we do to plan for uh, more improve uh, improvements to those areas to make safety a, a better? And once you once you kind of pull this plan together, I guess there's a process. Uh, for public hearings? Is there yeah, we, we have three public hearings. Uh, one we've already had March 18th at our regular uh, deliberative session we have for the Planning Commission. We've got a second one. Uh, I've got it written down here so I want to make sure I say it correctly. On April 4th at 6 p.m. at CD Stamps Community Center. We wanted to have it a little different time so we could give maybe some of the folks that can't make it at 4 o'clock another mm -hmm. opportunity. And we wanted to get it off site from City Hall to maybe make it a little more um, uh, comfortable uh, right. for some people to come to the community center as to come to the city hall. Then we have a third one that's April 15th during our regular de uh, deliberative session meeting at 4 o'clock at city hall. So there's two more of those uh, for folks to, uh, uh, to uh, attend. And, and just to be clear about this, the one that's away from city hall, folks, we won't put that on television, I don't think. So, or so you know, so if you're nervous about that, then... Yeah, right. right. That, that, yeah. Sometimes that's yeah. one of the reasons to have it off-site. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, But, uh, I, you know, I'm just really impressed with all the work that you guys do. you got to be serious about this to be a member of the, of the uh, Planning Commission because, uh, I mean, you guys are, are really planning the future of the city in a, in a lot of uh, infrastructure-wise, rather. We're, we're, we're at least putting out there what we suggest. Uh, the, city, the direction the city should go, then it'll be in the hands of the mayor and aldermen to make their final decisions. And of course, the public will have another opportunity to go before them and, and speak their piece. And, and they have there'll be other public hearings then. But it, you know, I, I think it's pretty important that, that you guys are, are thinking because uh, thinking that far out because uh, these are things that's probably going to ha be happening over the next 20 years. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And this is not in stone. Uh, this is not something that's going to happen. This is what we, we would suggest or we foresee, but we'll work together to uh, adjust it. Uh, you can pick up a copy of this down to Planning and Codes, or you can go to telehomatn.com mm -hmm. and see a copy of it on the Telehoma website, okay. the draft. Okay. How you, did you get involved in all of this? I got appointed by our last mayor. And uh, our current mayor uh, asked me to stay on, which I was honored to do. And I've been on about seven years now, planning wow. commission. Yeah, maybe longer than that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. And as you grow old, older, uh, Caitlin, you'll find that uh, people will realize, you know, I, this guy will do anything. You know, he, you know, he'll he'll do anything if he, if, when you can find people that are willing to uh, volunteer because he didn't get paid anything for this. No, no, no and it's like a second job. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, what it sounds exa like. exactly. <laughs> exactly. When you love your community, it's a it's a it's a passion. I mean, you want to you want to want tell a home to do well, and you want to be organized. It's a, it family. is, and I was making a joke of that, but it's not about the pride. Yeah. I mean, it's about pride yeah. in your community. Yeah. Charles, thank you so much for coming thank by you, today. We're out of time. Uh, thank you. We'll be <laughs> right back in <laughs> just a moment, folks, with more living right after these messages. Mark. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay him a visit. <laughs>
ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. When you see the sign, the main event, take a close look inside at a hair studio that offers services by some of the best master stylists in Middle Tennessee. These stylists offer a list of services that compete with large city salons, from trendy cuts for men, women, and children, to the latest color techniques, including highlights and bold color accents. Other services offered include permanent hair weaving and relaxing to formal hairstyle for that special occasion. You can also give yourself a very special treat with a full makeover including full body waxing. For your convenience, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until the last client leaves happy. Call and make your appointment at 931-571-8682 or stop by our Telehoma location at 207 North Jackson Street. Pamper yourself at the main event today. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. Are you ready? Yep. Click the links. Oh, sweet Lisa, you're so fine, like a very fine wine. Girl, I need you in my life. Will you be my wife? Charter Internet has more bandwidth to support all your devices. Experience the power of Charter on the nation's fastest Internet. Hi, right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very, very glad today to have Ed Carter, who is the executive director of the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency here with us. And Ed, thank you for coming and spending some time with us. We feel very fortunate to have a guy like you uh, spend time and, and come in our studio and give a little talk to us. I know uh, you're here with Monty Halcom and a group that's next door having some ongoing education with, your, with some of your people. We are. I appreciate you having me over and enjoying the time and it's uh, being able to interact with both groups. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, little, a little bit of history on you. you. You told me earlier you're from East Tennessee originally. Grew up in Hawkins County for the most part, around Rogersville. Mm -hmm. Lived in a unique area called Pressman's Home, Tennessee. Uh, it was the international headquarters of the printing Pressman's Union. So it was an odd place to grow up, but, but it was a great place. Very and interesting. Then moved to Blunt County, and that's where I stayed until I got out of college. Okay, and then, but you also said you have spent time in all three divisions of the state. I did. I started to work in West Tennessee, and then, then the, most of my career has been in Middle Tennessee. And how did you, how did you start off as a, an, an officer? I've been in just about every division of the agency. I, I started off actually our information and education division. Several years ago we had fair exhibits and we, we did live animal displays all across the county fairs. And that's what I started off doing, then later moved into the, the enforcement division and then uh, into one of our field divisions out in, in our region office and then into the boating division and then eventually into this. Okay. Do you, have, do you spend a lot of time in Nashville? Do you have to spend a lot of time there? Well, that, that's where my office is, but I do spend an awful lot of time on the road. On the road, on the road. Well, what we're going to do with Ed today, folks, is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, several issues that are involved with our wildlife in Tennessee and the management of our wildlife. And over the next three weeks, we're going to bring you uh, some conversation with Ed about different things. One of the first things I guess uh, we need to, to get into is because 
with the economy the way it is and the federal government uh, cutting this and cutting that and the state having to cut this and what comes down to the local uh, area, budget cuts, budget cuts, budget cuts. How is, how is your agency funded? <laughs> You know, we're a little unique. We we don't receive general funds through the, or tax money, in other words, through the governor's budget. We're self-funded through hunting and fishing licenses and boat registrations, and there's some money that comes back to us from the federal government on an excise tax on firearms and ammunition. Okay, so all of you folks out there who are hunters and fishermen, buy your license. Exactly. We, we don't go very far <laughs> without that. That's a, and, we, and they, they've been kind of flat over the last several years, but it's okay. A lot of states have gone way down, so I'll take flat right now. Well, do you, uh, I guess that means there's not a huge growth in hunting and fishing. Do you see, uh, do you see as many youth getting involved in, in, in the hunting and fishing arena as there once was? I, I don't believe that there are. And, and we have a number of programs like a lot of the other states that are youth oriented to try to at least introduce people into the, the idea of what hunting and fishing is all about. And if they like it, they stay. And if they don't, you know, they go to something else. But there's so much demand on their time between sports and, and a lot of electronic media now that really sucks a lot of people's time off and, and they stay at home. But but youth probably are, are probably lagging behind and we saw an interesting statistics lately that a lot of people now are actually not starting to hunt and fish until they get in their mid-20s when it, usually it was when I was growing up you, your dad or your mom took you hunting and fishing and that's how you got into it but now it's uh, when they get some disposable time and disposable income it seems to be when they're deciding to do that. Right and and a lot of young people these days are so much activity in other sports. Oh, absolutely. And and other school things and you know they're they're around the clock they're doing something. So the days of dad taking taking the kids and going to a creek or a, a river and spending that time on the bank learning how to fish or or going out and learning how to hunt, it just doesn't seem like there's a, as much of that. I've got a 16-year-old granddaughter that loves to hunt. And she was scheduled to go on the youth turkey hunt, where she made the varsity softball team. So they've got their first tournament, and now she's conflicted. She doesn't know what to yeah, do. I bet. I bet. How many officers do you have now in the state? Uh, counting the, the supervisor position, about 176. And that is that is that adequate by your estimation to, to do what you need to do? Well, I would really like to see more because th there are a number of counties that have one officer and needless to say they can't be 24 hours a day, seven days a week so we're always swapping people back and forth between counties so we would really like to have a, a minimum of two officers in every county and most of them do now but we still have a number of one officer counties. Okay, uh, with these officers uh, what, all, what all is is an officer responsible for? In his, in his area. Their, their biggest charge, of course, is anything related to hunting, fishing, or boating. Now, when I also have to throw in there wildlife-oriented problems, whatever they are. Uh, for instance, uh, deer depredation on somebody's farm. You know, it's not a hunting thing, but, but you've got a species of wildlife causing a problem, so they're going to take care of that. Uh, in East Tennessee, we have a lot of of conflicts with bears, where bears are in people's yards. In some of the areas, we have geese and swimming pools, and so <laughs> they have to do a lot of that. But, but they're also peace officers, and but they have a a, a role in homeland security. We, we're the the waterborne police agency of the state, if you know, for lack of a better word, right? Because that's we're the only state agency that's charged with boating safety, either on the state or local level. So our guys have to utilize those skills, and at any one time, when you think about all the people that converge on a, on a lake in the middle of, of the summer, some of them, some of those little lakes become larger than a lot of cities. And they have the same responsibilities on the water that, that an officer on land would have. So they have, have those. When the president comes to town, our folks do the waterway stuff on the security with, with the, those kind of, of details. When there's a disaster, like during all the tornadoes that we had a few years ago, uh, because we have the four-wheel drives and the four-wheelers and the, and the expertise you to be in You can get there. They go out and they do those things during snowstorms, the same kind of thing. When Katrina hit, we sent 32 people down to Louisiana, and they spent about a week down there evacuating people. And Again, uh, doing the same kind of things they normally do in their job, but for a different mission. Okay. Okay. So um, 
these these guys have to have to be water people. They have to know, uh, I guess, like when the different seasons are in. So like it's dove season, and I'm sure they're they're spending more time looking at the hunting aspect of it. Sure. But at the same time, there's fishing going on. It, so I can see how they would be pretty well spread thin. They are, and it's generally a long day. A lot of the hunting and fishing activities take early, late, you know, dawn and dusk. Right, right. So they'll be doing those and working boating sometimes in the, in the mid-afternoon. So yeah, it gets to be pretty rigorous sometimes in trying to find a time when you can actually take some time off. Okay, what type of training, and I know Monty's over here right now next door giving a class on uh, on how to deal with a complicated situation like when you pull someone over, negotiations and, and different things like that. What, what type of training do your people, ongoing training, do they need to go through to be competent and, and do their job in the way that you want them to do it? Well, to begin with, to apply for a wildlife officer position, you have to have a degree in wildlife or forestry. So if they're going to be a college graduate with that background, after they get through that, we're going, we'll start with a training program in Nashville where we bring all of them together. They'll spend about four to six weeks going through that basic. Then they go to the State Law Enforcement Training Academy and spend the next eight to ten weeks there. And they graduate from there. Then they come back out and go through another in-house training program. And then over their career, we're going to send them a bunch of specialized schools, boat accident investigation, man tracking schools, search and rescue. This depends on what it, what it is, but they'll, there's from the time you hire to the day you leave, you're going through a different training program. You're, you're being educated. Yes. You're being educated. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break right now, and we'll be back and talk about a few more things. Sounds good. a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. The Charter Triple Play lets you experience TV, internet, and phone the way you want with no contracts. Hooked on HD? Now over 100 HD channels available. Movie lover? Get 10,000 on-demand movies and shows. 1,500 in HD, including movies in 3D. Missing your favorite shows? Record and watch TV with DVR service for four rooms and over 780 hours of storage space. Get Charter TV for $29.99 a month. Photo fiend, music fan, video streamer? Switch to super fast Charter Internet and do it all with the bandwidth to support all your devices. At 30 megabits per second, Charter Internet is 10 times faster than the phone company's DSL. Get Charter Internet for $29.99 a month. Want more talk for less? Charter Phone has unlimited long distance calling with no added fees like the phone company charges. Get Charter Phone for $29.99 a month. The new Charter Triple Play. TV, internet, and phone for just $29.99 a month each when bundled. Call 855-81-T-PLAY now. All right, folks, we're back, and it is time. It's snowing out there. It's miserable out there. What are you going to do? How are you going to get relief? <laughs> you go to the South Pacific, folks. And I've got the South Pacific right here with me. <laughs> Look at those lovely shining faces right there. If that won't melt the snow, folks, nothing will. It'll melt your heart, I'll guarantee you that. Now, <laughs> let's sweet. just let you all introduce yourselves and tell us why you're here. All right. My name is Jenny Cubitz, and I am here to um, tell you about South Pacific, uh, CPI's production, April 5th. I play the part of Nellie Forbush. Uh, I'm Kaylee Wilson, and um, I'm a nurse in real life, and I also 
play a nurse, uh, Ensign Janet McGregor, in the play. Oh. I'm Rima Bell. Um, I'm playing the lead nurse, Lieutenant Marshall. Lieutenant, so you you have rank, huh? And she's very she bossy. Does. Can you control bossy. these two? I'm right working here? on it. I'm working on it. I'm supposed to be very very stern and bossy. <laughs> this is this is very exciting. This this is a cast of not thousands but bunches. Many. I don't uh, even know how many. Do you like forty five? Forty five. Yeah. Yeah. A lot yeah. of folks. Right. Yeah. A lot of folks. And it's a it's a great undertaking. And who is your who's your producer? Um, well, the director is director, director is um, Peggy Hayden, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, and Beverly Long. I guess she's just does, is does doing the, choreography. the uh, choreography. Uh -huh. choreography. Um, and then the music director is Cindy Jolly, Cindy which you Jolly. might know. I, know <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> and um, who else is Vicky Collinsworth? Oh, that's right. Vicky is our is uh, one of our um, orchestra members, our piano player. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's about all that I can think of. I'm sure there's more people. Okay. But, um, and and this is going to be done at South Jackson Civic Center. It is. And the dates on this, I know it's how many weeks? How many? Two weeks, weekends. Two weeks. April 5th, 6th, and 7th. Mm -hmm. And April the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Mm -hmm. um, the evening shows are at 7:30, and the afternoon shows, which are on uh, the evening shows, Sunday. are Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. At 2 p.m. Yes, sir. Uh, how long have you been? How long have you been working on this production right now? Boy, the first rehearsal was <clears throat> when was it, girls? You I've slept it? since then. I can't remember. <laughs> the end of January. The, yes, yeah, I believe it at, was. Yeah, it was even before the other show had finished. We right. had just finished the one show, and we had already been sort of trying to practice right. the other. This right. One. Now, and I, I'll ask that question because you were in uh, I Love You, I You're, love perfect. You're Perfect, Now, now Change, change. Mm -hmm. which was a cast of six people. Six. And or eight, actually. Eight, eight, eight counting mm -hmm. the orchestra. Well, no, there no, was. No, that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Ten counting the orchestra. Correct. Mm -hmm. Which was Cindy and Vicki. Yes. And uh, <laughs> uh, how much time, and I guess this is a question for them and me as well, what kind of time differential is there in doing a small show, not small in, in production on stage, but small cast versus huge cast? Wow. Yeah, it, um, it's very different. You have to deal with everyone's schedules. You know, we're all volunteers here. <laughs> right, right. You have to deal with the schedules. You have to deal with, you know, every little tiny uh, set piece that needs to go in place and everyone learning their music and line rehearsals and so when you're dealing with a lot more people it just makes it a lot more difficult to uh, get it all together right. but we're working it and we're going to get there we're um we're doing run throughs right now you know practice and practice right. but um, as as with a smaller cast costuming as well oh, yes, is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. yes we're still oh, even have, working you have on no it. idea <laughs> <laughs> no idea well, you already have we nurse have... stuff but it's probably not period nurse it's not stuff. 1940s nurse stuff but it's right. amazing what you knew then how it applies now so so we're it okay works, huh? but everything is it's so well cast everybody that is um that has a part is perfect for that part everybody is i'm just amazed at the talent at the uh, musicianship, um, from the cast members to the uh, to the orchestra, orchestra is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. We're so fortunate to be in a small town and have access to all these fantastic actors and musicians. You know, and, it, and it's funny. It's uh, I guess it's sort of like athletics for the same way. Mm -hmm. You go through spells with your ac athletic teams when you have good athletes coming through. Sure. And when the when they're good athletes there, it makes a Regular coach look like a real good coach. <laughs> you know, well, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. We and have a great you, coach. And when we you, do. Yeah, okay. but when you have when you have talented people also in in acting and singing and musicianship coming mm -hmm. through, you know, it it makes for better production for all of us to be able to go see, mm -hmm. and not knocking down on others that aren't. That's just the facts of life. Some people. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't always have a great trumpet player or a great yeah. violinist, <laughs> but when you do. You know, nice. it, 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 it makes it better for everybody yes. and, act, like and acting people because there was a time I think around here where there wasn't in schools in the schools there wasn't that much emphasis right you know it's all about math and science <coughs> and, and if you throw a little acting in there on the side you're lucky and so I think there's more 
more being handed out that way mm -hmm. as far as people. Mm -hmm. We might have been the last generation where that was that was really important. Yeah. yeah. Thank goodness. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Right. So uh, Rosie Graham's out there. She is. And she's past president, and now the president of the uh, Playhouse is Debbie Sanders. Debbie Sanders. Sanders. Mm -hmm. And so you have a good board. And what uh, what are some of the next things that will be uh, that will be coming up? I believe we have a, it's sort of a to be announced production happening in June. I think an oldie show. Okay, oh, they good. decided yeah. it's yeah. an oldie okay, show. Good. So yeah. And and what the Playhouse does is is have have uh, what four. Four to five events a year. Yes, yes. And and it's always fun, and it's always great in that there's a big cast on, on on several of these things because that gets a whole lot more people involved. It does. It's been it's been a great opportunity to meet new people. I mean, yes. you know, I've not didn't know Rima. She's been in Tullahoma for years and was a school teacher, and this is her yeah. first performance. This is my very first time. Really? So it's, so nice so to... it's just been a wonderful it, opportunity. Isn't it fun? Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> we're having a good time. <laughs> we're having a great time and meeting lots of new people. She's well, addicted. The, the dynamics, you know, the, the dynamics of what goes on on stage and, and uh, you know, I, I said this past year during the country show, uh, I wrote a little something about the, the sky being big enough for all the stars. And a small town stage in a place like this, like Tullahoma, where there's so much community support, that stage is big enough for all the stars sure. because you can yes. walk up on it. And if you like it, if you thrive on it, it's one of the greatest places in the world to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the more people that realize that, the more young people that get involved yes. with, with Playhouse mm -hmm. and with uh, acting <coughs> camps and singing camps and musicianship, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's what, that's what defines our society. That's right. And in Tullahoma, Tennessee right now and this surrounding area, folks, we got a pretty good society we're living in <laughs> because of folks just like these folks right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're my, you. you're, you're, you're my, you're marvelous, dear. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> Folks, that is at South Jackson Civic Center. That is April the 5th weekend and then the 12th well, weekend. 12th those weekend, two weekends. those mm -hmm. two weekends. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Go see them. They're good. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> I thought Red Cross does Katrina. They don't help single moms. Hi. What happened to our house last year it about your birthday? It flooded and the water flooded out. Yeah. The Red Cross arranged the hotel for us. They gave me that break, that leverage, to be able to get it together and uh, take care of them, you know? I feel like we've come full circle. Like that. Mm -hmm. This is how I'll do it. There you go. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. A salute to the never wasters, the coupon clippers, switch flippers, one last drop of milk drippers, the thoughtfully thrifty, and the just plain cheap. Charter respects your economic IQ and honors it with a phone service worthy of your ever watchful wallet. Charter phone, just $19.99 a month for real monthly savings for fabulously frugal folks like you. Switch to Charter Phone and get unlimited local and long distance and 13 calling features with no extra fees like the phone company charges you. It's all about springtime and it's all about home improvement and there's everything from lawn mowers to uh, John Deere haulabouts and we're going to go inside and look at all the great new things for your home. One of the things that everybody does to get in is bring a canned good that will be distributed to people in need. 
this looks like the main man right here. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are things going today? Most excellent. Who's, Most who's, excellent. Uh, who's responsible for putting this on, please? Uh, Coffee County Broadcasting. So that'd be WHMT Radio and Tullahoma, Tullahoma Radio and uh, WMSR Thunder Radio. How many years is this? This is our eighth year doing this. Eighth year of doing the eighth home show? Eighth year of doing the home show, yes. And people from all over the county are here with just... Home, home Actually, even bigger than, than all over or... the county, but it, it's anything, think of it anywhere anywhere from the start of wanting to buy a home or buy a piece of property all the way to maybe you want to improve your home in some way and everything in between. All so right. basically we say from, uh, if you want to say from footers to, from footers to the ceiling. Okay. That sounds good, man. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you very Looks much. Looks like Thanks a good crowd out. here today. And, and, and you know, the, I saw you filming the food over here, too. That's a donation that we make every year as, as a result of this particular event to the uh, the Good Samaritan Food Bank. So, All right. Sounds good. Great cause, great deal. All good right, job. Thank you very much. Always trying to get back to the community. Cheryl Pest Control in here. Everything from pest control to, uh, there's Kevin right there. How you doing, man? Hey, doing Having good. How good you day doing? Today? Having a good day. How great, about you? Great. Doing well. well come on big out home, and see us. Big home <laughs> show. That's it. Big there home show today. There you go. And there's, there's the realtors that read from Remax right there. And just all kinds of folks looking around at, at everything they need to uh, to work on their home. There's Duck River Electric Membership Corporation. There's uh, there's a cabinet company right there. Hello there. And a lot of a lot of realty, a lot of realty folks. Bring any soap with you? Any who? Soap? No, but I need a bottle. Hi, John. <laughs> how you doing, buddy? There's, Tom's even got the shower operating and showing how all this stuff goes together here and how you can keep your shower from leaking and having a moldy, old stinky bathroom. He'll fix you up brand new. Water's Edge Chocolates. So we've got... There's nothing better to put in a good home than chocolate, is there? That's right. It's best. <laughs> Stock your new cabinets full. Uh, well, congratulations. Congratulations. Coffee can realty. Those folks are always around doing good things. Look at that. Who we have here? That's Christopher Equipment. You know those guys. They can do it all. Look at that. They can lift, they can lift you up in the air and then bring you right on back down. They got it all there. Bath filter. Bath fitter. What's that now? Bath fitter. Fitter. Yes, all right. So you can fix them up, yeah, huh? Put a bathtub right over top of what you got, got going on. All right. Showers too, I guess, yes, huh? Yes, sir. You name it, they can fix it. That's absolutely right. right. Made right, right here in Tennessee. Right in Tennessee, right here at the home show. Let's see. There's the cook boys over there. Y'all ain't got any y'all ain't got any brooches over in the corner, do you? Uh, you done got rid of them, hadn't you? There you go, I'll get rid of him too. That'd be ten dollars. Yeah, I bet. That won't that, that won't get you to the house. And then this is everything from free and rail. This is this is
And there's the residential services and other things through there from Murfreesboro. And they've got everything from columns to siding to gutters to windows, doors, you name it, they got. Place is full of folks. We've got a paint booth here. Look at that beautiful face right there. How you doing today? Well, I'm great, John. Great. How are you? Are you? Are you pumping a little real estate today? Pumping real estate. Talking about who the best ones are to sell it for you. Absolutely. Huh? There you go. Yes. It, it's got to be that beautiful face right there. Don't don't have to go any further, Joe or Wyckett Realtors. Look at here, here's my old buddy Dale Cumber here. Cumber Plus, baby, how you doing? I'll speak, reach out there and get that hand. Y'all having a good show today? It's been real good with John. All right, how's everything going at Cumber Plus? Good? Uh, this slow winter makes me look like a good spring. Hey, if we can just keep it from raining, we'll That's get out. We, <laughs> we may gotta have all. muck boots right now to yeah. work, doesn't right. it? Right, rain kills us all. If you don't like your house, take a vacation. <laughs> that girl right there can fix you right up. She, if you don't like it, don't, while they're while you're getting your home remodeled, just go see go see Celebration Travel, just take leave. a trip, <laughs> come back and it'll all be done. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs> DTC Wireless has uh, cellular phones. We also have uh, security devices. Security stuff too as well for the home. Very good. You having a good day? Having a good day. All right. We did that store. Who's this bunch right here? Mid 10 fence. Mid 10 fence. Look at those fences back there. Tall fences, short fences, wooden fences. I guess that's a plastic fence. Vinyl fences. I bet you got one. Do you have windows and doors there? Just fences. Just fences. Iron fences? We got aluminum fences. Aluminum fences. There you go. Looking good. This is hard surface specialties right here. And they have all kinds of stuff right there. And he's a, I can tell he's a smart man because he's got Samantha Terrell back there with him. Look at that beautiful child right there. You never can tell who you might run across at the home show. That's right. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Folks, we're back, and and I've got this this bubbly kind of gal showed up. She made it through the ice and the snow all the <laughs> way from the enchanted village of Bell Buckle, and that's Miss Valerie Smith, and she's up here, and Caitlin's up here with us, and, and hello, uh, Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> and carrying on a conversation about college, and Valerie, who is a musician and a teacher. And uh, a great blue bluegrass gal. Blame it. Just blame it on the bluegrass. Blame it on the bluegrass. That was my project I released a couple of years ago, and you were nice enough to let me bring it on your show. Oh, and yeah. that stayed the on the charts for over two years. I was surprised. Now it's off the charts. So I got to record something new. But, well, let's write something. Yeah. You know I, well, I, I emailed you the other day about writing something. So. Okay. I got an idea I'm going to share with you okay. when we get off the air. <laughs> but you're here, you're here also today to talk about the Bell Buckle Banquet Hall Easter Buffet. That's right. I'm, I am, am a, I'm wearing a different hat today. I'm, uh, I'm, hats. yes, hats. I have several hats, but <laughs> today we're, we're talking about what others are doing. And, you know, I come from Bell Buckle, so um, I hold all their events very close to my heart, and it's exciting. Um, Next uh, weekend on March 31st, uh, from let me make sure I give the 11 to 3 p.m. Um, they're going to have a wonderful buffet. That's this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday at the Bell Buckle um, Banquet Hall. 
if people really like to wake up early, early, early in the morning and they want to come to the park, they can come to sunrise service, have breakfast, and then go straight to the, you know, buffet or they could come for lunch. To your house. Well, they could come to my house, but they'd be disappointed with the food. <laughs> because at the banquet hall, they're going to serve leg of lamb, prime rib, all sorts of things, all their side dishes, their famous desserts. Uh, you know, it's. Your house is chicken necks and backs and. Well, they might get chicken nuggets, you know, or something. <laughs> I, I could, I could, you know, stir up something, but I'll probably be at the banquet You'll be hall at the eating banquet there. Hall as well. Well, because my in laws are coming in from South Dakota. And oh. Yeah, so I won't um, torture them with my Easter buffet at my house. <laughs> just take them, take them to, to the, the banquet hall. hall. Uh, it'll just be a nice sit-down dinner. Adults are 19.95. Children um, six and and uh, six to 12 are like 9.95. Right. And you can call and get your reservations if you have a large group of people, or even if you don't, so you can make sure you have a, a place to sit. You can call the um, banquet hall at 931-389-0223. If they can't remember that. They can't. Well, just, just call the cafe then, and, the, and they'll, they'll tell them the what to do. Yeah. Or just so. stick your head out the window and holler toward Bell Buckle. They'll just, figure just, it just out. All right. I want to come to the Easter buffet. But will it should bunny be a good be, time. Will the Easter bunny be there, you think? It would be nice if he would show up. I, I know the Easter bunny is going to show up at my house. I mean, my daughter, Josie, who's 10, she's very excited I about this she day. You know, she, <laughs> it's another day. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. And, you know, I, I find in the mornings I have to to get my mop out and wash muddy uh, bunny prints off of my wood floor <laughs> that lead to the Easter basket and okay. you know and sometimes Josie shares her candy with me but <laughs> occasionally. occasionally but there's there's other things going on in Bell Buckle Always. the best way to find out anything that's going on in Bell Buckle is either come here to this channel because mm -hmm. someone's always here telling always you always talking about or it. you can go to uh, bellbucklebanquethall.com or the chat and chew you can get the newsletter, the chat and chew. That'll always tell you. But because other things are coming up, like April 27th, Saturday night, 6 p.m. There's a group called Just Us, mm -hmm. and they're kind of a rock. That's kinda, Scott Palin. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. He's coming to do music, and there'll be dinner. Yeah. And um, I think people will enjoy that. But you know, uh, a, a really great thing happened um, on on Valentine's Day was the. Uh, South Jackson Street Band, yeah, and they came and played at the right. banquet hall, and it was a full house. Okay. I mean, everybody was dancing what? and eating and listening, and they're coming back, and that's going to be a salute to the veterans. Okay, on March the fourth at six. March the fourth. Yeah, that's already passed. May the fourth. I, I was just testing you to see if May you were awake, fourth. if you'd had your coffee, and, and see. I was, I and coffee. her being young, I thought you know she. She'd catch it, but <laughs> she nah. would catch on to it. It was for, faster. I was faster. It was faster than faster you. Faster than a speeding bullet. But we do know now. This Sunday is going to be. Tall buildings with a single. Bank. I want to see how good her memory is since she's younger than both of us. So, what's happening this Sunday at the Bell Buckle Banquet Hall? The Easter buffet. Or you can go to the sunrise service and you get food at both. Or you can be both. Yeah. Yeah. Both. I mean, that's breakfast food. That's breakfast. But if you wait and then you go to the banquet hall, you can get <laughs> a leg of lamb or ribs or whatever you Prime, prime rib. rib. Yeah. All, All sorts of stuff. She's good. Stuff, See? It's time to go. <laughs> this age, me they remember go. Go. everything. Anyway, to go. thank you, folks. We and uh, we'll see you in Bell Buckle. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 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 hey! <laughs> Charter Internet has the bandwidth to support more devices than anyone else in the market. So everyone can do their own thing, whether it's watching puppy videos or creating an all-powerful command center to mastermind the complete domination of the world, the universe, and... Ooh, ice cream! Get 30 megabits per second for only $30 and let it all in. All right, we're back. Well, we've had fun today. We've had all kinds of Ka fun. Caitlin got a test. They tested <laughs> Caitlin here. It's a big test. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> well, you, you came through very well. I was, I was proud of you. They, she's giving, they're giving us the wrap. Is, is it wrap time? 
It's wrap time. All right. All right. Uh, this past Sunday, there's a palm walk that happens downtown. And uh, uh, the, some of the churches downtown take palm leaves and travel around the downtown area to celebrate Palm Sunday. And we got some video. All right. Cool. Yeah. Did you do that yourself? Did that myself. And we're proud to have Caitlin with us and hope she'll come back. And we're going to say bye. Bye bye, folks. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Palm Sunday Walk that's taken place for numerous years here in Tullahoma. It starts at the First Presbyterian Church, and the churches have all been invited to come, and the walk will go uh, to First Christian Church. There'll be uh, a message given here at the First Presbyterian Church, and then a message at the First Christian Church, and the Palms will walk down through the streets of downtown Tullahoma. Uh, representing Palm Sunday. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O God, of our salvation. Fill us with the true life of your Son who became one of us and remain true to your will, even though that meant the way of the cross. Grant us your grace. Make us ever mindful of the unsearchable depths of your love. Pour out upon us and the gift of our Lord. And now the walk has begun with a police escort and some of the churches down the way will maybe join in with this. This is uh, basically the First Christian Church and the First Presbyterian Church. And these folks will be walking to the parking lot or to the courtyard of the First Christian Church where there will be an ending ceremony for Palm, the Palm Sunday Palm Walk. Some of those here comes some of those Lutherans right here. The Lutheran contingency is small this year, but they're well represented. Yeah, here they come, so they're making their way.